Hey everybody and welcome to our webinar Wednesday series. We are super excited to have you with us today and super excited to kick off a brand new series that we have for this spring semester with our One UA series. We're super excited to have a couple of special guests here with us today. But as a reminder, I am your host, if you will. I'm Allison Beasley, the coordinator of parent and family programs here at the University of Alabama. And we have a couple of special guests here today from the Student Government Association. And I will let them introduce themselves and then we'll go through just a couple of highlights and have them answer some questions about how students can get involved and talk about One UA as a whole. So if y'all wouldn't mind introducing yourselves and telling us who you are and your role within Student Government Association. Demarcus, why don't you go first? So I guess I'll go first. Um, my name is Demarcus Joyner. I've been on one of these before with Allison, I think over the summer. Uh, so my name is Demarcus Joyner. I'm from Roanoke, Alabama. I'm a senior here majoring in civil engineering with a concentration in pre-law, and I currently serve as the Student Government Association President. Hey, my name is Caitlin McTeer. I am originally from Sylacauga, Alabama, and I'm a senior news media major, um, and I'm the Vice President for Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, and Student Government. Perfect. Thank you all so much. So we're super excited to have Caitlin and Demarcus here today to tell us a little bit more about what it means to be One UA and exactly what that means to Student Government Association and how students can kind of learn more about that and how as families we can encourage students to get on board with being One UA and how to get more involved. So Caitlin, if you wouldn't mind, if you could just tell us a little bit of history about One UA, because this is something that we know originally came from Student Government Association, and we have shamelessly stolen this for our webinar series to dive into a little bit deeper with different campus partners to tell families about what that means. So if you wouldn't mind, just give us a little bit of history. Yeah, of course. So One UA, before it even had a name, the concept of having a week and really a campaign throughout an entire school year was something that began really DeMarcus and I's sophomore year in conversations when um, Dr. Taylor approached both of us and also Harrison Adams at the time, who was SGA president, and said, hey, I think that we need to be preparing for an election year. 2020 is going to be you know, a crazy year. Little did we know that a pandemic would happen, that the protests that happened this summer of racial injustice and police brutality and all of those things would be in the mix. And so maybe Dr. Taylor had some psychic powers, but was able to realize that we needed a campaign like that. And so when DeMarcus was elected SGA president and I was elected VP DEI, uh, we knew this was something that we still wanted to go through with. And so over the summer, uh, in the midst of the heat of pandemic and shutdown, we were having Zoom calls and FaceTimes and trying to figure out a name for the campaign. And we finally came up with One UA. We thought that really encompassed our entire student body and wanting every single student to feel like they could be a part of it. And we actually had our main One UA week at the end of September. So that was a um, variety of different events that we put on through student government along with the university. And, um, you know, One UA is something that we've continued to do throughout this semester. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. So, Demarcus, I'm going to ask you first. In your opinion, what would you say that it means to be One UA? Great question. So, I know <laughs> Caitlin kind of just hit on it a little bit, um, but the purpose of this campaign was to make sure that all students felt welcome while on campus. Um, and to make sure that the university felt like one, one home, one place for everybody to come to this melting pot to be something greater when they leave. So I think when I think of one UA, I think of it as, I guess, out of many one, so to speak. Um, it's different perspective, dis different aspects of life that people bring here to campus. But once we get on campus, as long as we treat each other like family, like one big happy family, I think that's the, the goal of one UA. Caitlin, and I'll ask you the same question. I think for me, One UA is really just making every single student feel like they belong and their stories matter. I think historically, when we look at the university, of course, we have a troubling past and we've not always done our best job of making sure that every student's story is represented. And I think with both DeMarcus and I being in office, that was really important for us in our collaboration is that we left SGA, left the university better than we found it. And I think we are both are in the same mindset that in doing that, it really is making students, whether they're Greek or non-Greek, whether they're international students or from Alabama, that they can make Alabama their, their home and really feel like they belong. 
I love that so much. Um, how does, in your opinion, how does SGA support that goal of One UA beyond just what y'all did in the fall? Kind of what are some of those ongoing events and initiatives that y'all have going on? I guess I can start by answering it. I think one of the most primary programs that we have is our DEI or Diversity, Equity, Inclusion Certification Program. This is started through DeMarcus um, last year when he served as first elected Vice President for Diversity, Equity, Inclusion. And, you know, we really didn't know what the future of it would look like, especially in this pandemic. And um, I just really wanted to enhance that foundation that DeMarcus had laid. And so, you know, our DEI certification program this year has over 80 organizations participating in it and 2,800 students that are doing their own individual advanced certification as well. And I think it really exceeded our expectations. We didn't think anyone would ever show up to this thing, and especially with it being virtual. And I think we've just really been able to impact students with the type of curriculum that we have. I feel like DeMarcus's programming last year was very focused on the personal development of students, you know, how to have tough conversations, how to have empathy, where now we've been able to shift to having more specialized conversations about LGBT issues or Black history um, here in Tuscaloosa. So it's just, I think we've been able to expand upon that and that's been very impactful for our community. And I guess kind of to piggyback off Caitlin, um, I know student government does a lot of things, but our main mission and goal is to make sure that we serve all students. Um, and one thing that I think that I'm probably most proud of, and I know Caitlin will be once to like this year's over with, is the Miss Unique UA pageant. Um, and it's an opportunity for ladies with disabilities to showcase their abilities rather than their disabilities. So they have the option to participate in a pageant um, and basically just have fun. And I think that's probably the most proud event that I put on last year just to make sure that they feel like they were one at UA and not just marginalized, so. I love that. Any plans for another pageant this year, virtual? Stay we are doing, yes, yes, stay tuned. Um, we're planning for something in March. We originally were trying to film uh, back in the fall and the girls wanted to you know, wait it out, see if we could let the pandemic get a little bit better and try to have more stuff in person, some more of a hybrid event. So it's actually in our SGA code of laws now that we always have to have the DEI certification and the Miss Unique pageant. So we will make it happen in some way, shape or fashion. I love that. I think that's a wonderful program. Okay, so DeMarcus shared his favorite uh, SGA event. Caitlin, what would you say is yours? I honestly think that the certification has been my favorite. I think it's been the largest part of my job this year. Um, I'd love to say, on a fun note, international karaoke last year was great with DeMarcus. We sang Love on Top, hit every single octave. It was a great time. Um, so we, of course, have those fun events. But I think for me, I love doing the certification this year, especially the LGBT history here at the University of Alabama. And I think for the first time that group here on campus was able to really um, have their history highlighted in a way that hadn't been done before. And so I think it's just really impactful now looking back at the entire program as we're coming up on our last certification and seeing the responses from students on Qualtrics and as they're turning in these surveys and they're starting to connect the dots. That's like the most wild part is when they're saying, well, I remember from the first certification meeting, so-and-so said this and it got brought up last week. And I think that like now I understand where they were coming from. And so you hope that even in this virtual space that students will get something out of it. And we're starting to really see those results, which is so incredibly rewarding. I love to hear that. I also hope that there's a video somewhere of y'all karaokeing. I would like to share that. Um, I would like to splice that in right here, but I know my technical skills are not there yet, uh, but I would like to see that for my own personal enjoyment um, to support the goal of One UA to, obviously. Um, I love that so much. I would, I would also ask what, because y'all have both kind of been on the entry level, if you will, and at the launching point of this DES certification program, what has been your favorite part? And if you have a favorite event 
of getting to see folks go from start to finish on that. And I know, Caitlin, you kind of touched on that, but if there's anything else you'd like to add, please feel free. I guess I'll start off. Um, so last year, when I, I guess, came up with the idea when I was writing for VPDI, mm -hmm. it was kind of just a dream. Um, my platform was Dream with Joiner, so it was a dream. But <laughs> I guess looking at it now, um, watching this dream come true and like, exceed my expectations by 100% is like mind boggling to me. So I think that's the thing that I'm like most proud of with the certification program is not one, the students who have participated, but last year we had like 25 student organizations certified. And this year, Caitlin said it's over 80. So just to see that campus is already like moving forward without being, and nothing is mandatory. And that's another piece that I wanna like emphasize it. It's not mandatory, students are doing this on their own. And it's not for personal gain, it's just for personal development. Yeah, I think I'll agree with DeMarcus. I mean, it's just seeing the campus community get personally vested in this program. I think that the most important thing I think that we've gotten from this past year is being really intentional. And especially with all of the protests, I think we've shifted to a place where we don't want just performative activism. We want to see programs that are meaningful and well thought out and that are actually creating change. And I think it just goes back to reading those Qualtrics responses, having people text me, having people say, I've never heard this opinion. I never knew the difference between equity and equality. I didn't even realize there were LGBT organizations on our campus. I didn't know there was such a history here in Tuscaloosa with civil rights. And when you realize that you're presenting information to people that they could easily come to the university and leave and never know, and that you're getting to put that information in their head that might impact their lives forever. Um, I think that's just such a big weight that we carry and probably one of the most fulfilling aspects of our job. I love that. I My heart is just bursting with pride for the two of you um, and getting to see this dream come true, DeMarcus, of seeing the certification program grow so much and just, I, it, I won't even say it's it's really gotten to its full potential yet because y'all have really made it work with COVID this year and making things work in the times of a pandemic and going virtual and making all of these things happen. I, shameless, just so proud of you both. Um, so my last kind of question for y'all is how can families encourage their students to get involved with Student Government Association and specifically if there's anything that they can get involved with specifically with DEI programming? Yeah, so I guess I'll start this and Caitlin will hop in hopefully and save me when I start drowning. But <laughs> <laughs> so for freshmen, we have this thing called first year council. It's basically freshman senate, so to speak. Teaches freshmen the legislative process of SGA, but also introduces them to many students who are already involved in SGA, as well as administrators. Um, applications usually open around July, June, July, and close right around when students get here on campus. Usually there are about 2000 students who apply and the top 65 are chosen. So it's a very competitive process. You don't have to be the first person to put in your essay to get chosen first, but because we thoroughly read each and every one. But I think it's one of the most rewarding things here. I was not in first year council. So even if your freshman does not wanna jump in head first, it's not an end all be all. Um, but I know Caitlin was in first year council and she can probably speak more to the development of herself through first year council better than I can. Yeah, I'll say, I mean, I loved first year council. I thought I was the coolest person ever when I passed my first resolution. I have pictures of myself after my first uh, FYC meeting. And I remember calling my mom and saying, oh my gosh, I'm student government at the University of Alabama. That's crazy. Little did I know that I would serve in the executive branch for two years. And, and you know, now I look back and I'm like, this has been such a crazy journey. And I know DeMarcus knows, knows that well as well. 
Um, but I think really first year council is a great place for that personal development and learning parliamentary procedure and a lot of the things that you may not know, but just like he also said, you don't have to do FYC or lobby board, which is another one of those things that a lot of our freshmen get involved with, with governmental affair, affairs um, to be successful in SGA. You know, you can hop in at any point. And I think the diversity of SGA and the aspects of, you know, maybe you want to do, do the judicial branch or maybe you want to do legislative and be in Senate. Maybe you want to be an executive and specifically use your skills of being a great photographer to be on the communications team or be in my uh, cabinet and you're specifically passionate about women and gender resources. So you become a liaison to the WGRC. I mean, there's really a place for everyone. And I think it's just really taking that first step as a freshman, not being too scared to walk in the SGA office in the FERG and just asking someone, hey, I'm interested in SGA. How can I get plugged in? I love that. And shameless plug, I believe SGA elections for the spring are approaching quickly. So if folks are interested in learning more, they can just visit the SGA website, correct y'all? sga.ua.edu. Um, and I think just our last question, is there anything else that you want parents and family members to know about One UA and anything else you'd like to share? I think for me, um, something that I have been really proud of with SGA and this year is the collaboration between DeMarcus and I and our executive council. Uh, I think that sometimes we forget the incredible representation that we have of, you know, diverse groups just within our exec right now, whether we, we have a Jewish student, we have me as a black female, I'm the first black female to serve on exec council. Um, and then we also have DeMarcus representing NPHC. And so I think that it has been incredible over our last four years to see how diversity, equity, inclusion has truly grown on our campus. Our freshman year, Dr. Taylor was hired and there had never really been anybody specifically working for diversity on campus. And so for us to come into this university without a VP of diversity, equity, inclusion, this position not even existing, and for both of us to have served in this position and DeMarcus to have served as president um, alongside me. I think I'm just really grateful for the university and it just goes to show that no matter what, where you come from and where your student might be, that the possibilities are endless. If they'll just push themselves a little bit and really try to push that envelope here at UA, it'll be ready to open. I love that. I don't know if I can follow up to what Caitlin just said. I don't know that you can. I was ready to like become a freshman again after that. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, I would say I just want students and families to know that once you come here, you are part of the family. Um, and just like a family, yeah, we argue, yeah, we fight. Not physically, but like we don't always agree on everything that happens here. But at the end of the day, we're always family. Um, we always go to the Brian Denning Yale yeah, Roll tie together. And when we leave there, we're still tied together oh god I sound like I'm giving a COVID like commercial right now but um <laughs> but I just want families to know that your students are safe when they come here and they're part of a family and don't worry about them it's gonna be tough but I think they'll be amazing once they get here I love that so much um thank you both so much for sharing some truly wonderful insights to kind of kick off our one UA series for parents and family members Stay tuned with us each Wednesday this month as we continue to highlight more campus partners and their aspects and views on what being One UA means to them and how students can get involved in many different ways across campus. So as always, if you have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to parent and family programs, parents at ua.edu, or give us a call at 1-800-392-2777. And as always, thanks for tuning in and roll tide.